Joining us now, Chair of the Defence Select Committee, that's Tobias Elwood. Uh, hello, Mr Elwood, thank you for joining us. Uh, what did you see or hear yesterday? Uh, it was chaos, and the country wants to see a functioning government. This is all deeply suboptimal. If we don't regroup fast and park the blue on blue, then we lose not just the prospects of winning the next general election, but even retaining a sizable opposition. So let's remind ourselves why we are here to serve the British people who are watching this day by day unfold and they want leadership. In my view, this requires this crisis requires a two phase plan. If we are to prevent the collapse of government stage one is the collective discipline to allow the chancellor to complete his economic update that both the markets and indeed the nation are waiting for. So we get some stability and predictability about energy bills, about pensions and benefits, about mortgage interest rates. Sorting the economy out must be our priority. And during this time, I say to colleagues that the steady, very public drip feed against the Prime Minister at this moment is not in the national interest. By all means, submit your letter to Graham Brady if you're uh, inclined, but let Jeremy Hunt complete his task. Because if we implode before then, the instability would lead to a run on the pound, interest rates climbing further, and it would put us into opposition for a generation. And the second phase would be for the Prime Minister to show and commit now to honestly addressing this question of her leadership with the 1922 committee and the cabinet, but after that fiscal statement next week. This would help move the entire debate behind closed doors rather than the reputationally damaging public soap opera that this is now becoming, and in worst case, triggering an early general election. Let's grip the situation. Let's start to control the agenda. So what you're saying, in a, in a very angry tone I'm picking up this morning, Mr Elwood, is that uh, you want everything to stay as it is for now until the 31st of October when the Chancellor delivers his uh, latest fiscal statement. But after that, all bets are off and this Prime Minister could well be out on a rear. That is where we are and that is what needs to be done. Of course it's complicated. It will require a consensus of where we go next, but ultimately... The trajectory that we're currently on will only lead into one place. So we need leadership, we need resolution. That's what the party can do when it's required. But ultimately, it requires collective discipline. Like I said, let's focus on what the nation wants to see right now is about tackling inflation and allowing our new chancellor to present his package of measures. Your chairman of the Defence Committee, what does this say um, to countries overseas? Well, they are watching this, and we should remember that it isn't just the domestic audience, but the rest of the world takes a huge interest in what Britain does. They like to see leadership from us, not least in what's going on in Ukraine at the moment, which could get very bumpy indeed with uh, Putin's back against the wall. And they are just wondering what on earth is happening in this country as things unravel. We need to sort this out, not just for our own benefit, but indeed for our role on the international stage. Uh, to that end, uh, what's going on with Ben Wallace in Washington speaking to his opposite number there? I understand he's going to be briefing the House of Commons today, but clearly it's moved into a very dangerous chapter. In quite incredible what Ukraine has done. Who'd ever thought six months ago that they'd been able to push back the third largest army in the world? But with Putin in a corner, now calling for martial law in those areas where he had that sham referenda, we must now ask the very difficult questions that perhaps we've avoided in the last 77 years, what do we do if a state uses a nuclear weapon? And I'm not sure we're quite there in that mindset yet, uh, but I understand that those conversations are happening behind the scenes. In fairness, we cannot rely on NATO because the consensus in NATO would suggest that both Turkey and, uh, and uh, uh, um, Hungary would not agree uh, with a consensus approach. It would require the coalition of the willing to stand up to Russia. Firstly, to provide a deterrent to prevent it happening in the first place. And secondly, what would our responsibility to react be? To make sure that if this precedent is crossed, that we punish that reaction, that we retaliate, retaliate in the necessarily right way. Um, and as we've spoken about previously, uh, Mr Elwood, China's watching. Well, exactly, because what happens in Ukraine let's say a nuclear weapon is used, or indeed, let's say Russia chooses to attack the nuclear power station in Kyrgyzstan, which is now being evacuated, that entire area. What will the West do? 
China has its own intentions uh, in its neck of the woods. It's watching what's going on in Ukraine very, very with interest indeed. So we set a precedent of how we respond in this situation here. Um, just a, a quick thought before I let you go. Um, do you want Liz Truss still to be Prime Minister at Christmas? I've mapped out what I think I, needs to happen. All this talk about whether she will be here or not should be parked, should be taken inside, behind closed doors, but the pr Prime Minister herself should recognise the severity of her own situation. Let's focus on getting the economy, economic package out. Then we can then turn to this very difficult matter of the leadership of the Conservative Party. It's good to talk to you as always, Mr Elwood. Thank you for joining us.